Hello, Anna Yan here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make porn in Blender. Yes, you heard me right. The reason why I made this tutorial is because I feel like there aren't enough resources um, to make NSFW content. And furthermore, I think that there's a real taboo around making porn and NSFW content, um, just art and just in general. Um, and I think this is unfair because humans naturally have sex. We're attracted to sex. So I feel like that we should be able to create art on the subject uh, if it's something that's beautiful to us um, or is attractive. Therefore, uh, I'm making this tutorial and these tutorials to dispel some of that taboo around making NSFW content in Blender and otherwise. Please join the NSFW Blender Discord in the description below. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So what's the final result that we wanna be able to create today? Okay, so the final result that we're we want to create is these images right here. Wait, okay, don't know why that was lagging, um, but Yep, so we want to create these three. So what I'm going to be doing in this tutorial here is I'm going to be teaching you how to pose the character, how to uh, light the character, add an environment, um, and a, another character, and also how to render as EXR, and then also color grade the image in DaVinci Resolve. And full credits goes to Polly Ford for his amazing tutorial on that subject. I just wanted to extend it further and take you through, through the whole complete process and also teach you through um, through uh, the color grading process, which I also stole from another video. <laughs> so I'll credit him in the description below. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So what are the prerequisites for this tutorial here? So first off, uh, let's start off with the files that you need to download, okay? So the files that you need to download, first off, this is a paid product. So I'm not gonna be able to share this environment here by Trum Studio because it is a paid product on Blender Market. However, if you want to use the same environment here, you can pay 19 USD, or you can just go to open3dlab.com. So just type open3dlab.com. And there's some amazing environments here that you can just use for free. For example, God of War, uh, Resident Evil, the whole way from Kiriko Cin Cinematic. So we have all these amazing, amazing, um, uh, environments that you can just download uh, by Euro, by Rigid3D and otherwise. Okay, so anyway, so once we've downloaded our environment, we also need uh, just two characters here. So the reason why I'm downloading this ASHI file here is because, well, um, it is just another character to import and I wanted to show you that. However, this one here, the ASHI file is optional. However, what we really want here is the Yoruichi um, Yoruichi, Yoruichi, um, smart base. Okay. So we want to download this fantastic model here. Please just download the v1.blend file right here. Okay. So just press download. Don't ignore this first one because um, you don't need it. So the other model that we also need is Ashi uh, smart base. Okay. So I'm just going to click on the first link here. This is going to give you the Aho Angel um, model here. So please just download both of these files here. So number one and number two, okay? So you need both of them. If you don't download both of them, um, you will miss the textures. So this is not optional, you need to download both of them. Okay, so now we've downloaded that, we also need the add-ons here, okay? So we also need the uh, Diffeomorphic. Um, so I'm just gonna type in Diffeomorphic DAS add-on, okay? And you're gonna click on the first link here. Okay, so we're not gonna be downloading 1.6 because that is now obsolete. Uh, and I'm just going to go to DAS Importer here. Just click on DAS Importer. And you can see it takes you straight to this page here. So just download the latest stable version here, which is 1.7.2. Okay, so download this zip file here. So I'm just gonna download and yeah, okay. And then, well, I'm not gonna download this because I already have downloaded it right here. So it's right here, uh, this one here, but um, you'll have to download that there. So we need this for two reasons, because we'll need this for installing the MHX plugin and the import DAS plugin. Because these are two add-ons that you'll need for a lot of models on SmartBase. Uh, and especially if you're using DAS models that have been imported to Blender, you'll need these two add-ons. So I highly advise you install them. How do we install them? Okay, so let's just go to Blender 4.0. That's all good. And I'm just gonna go general and we're gonna install this plugin here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go edit preferences. I'm gonna to go to add-ons right here. 
So let me do that one more time. Edit, preferences, add-ons, install. So we're gonna install this MHX RTS v1.7.2 zip file. Okay, so I found the zip file and I'm just gonna double click on it and it's gonna install this one here. But you can see it's not enabled right now. So I need to make sure to enable it. Okay, so make sure this checkbox is on. The second thing we also need to install here is the um, MHX plugin. Okay, so it did install it, but it didn't actually enable it. So you need to search in this search bar right here, MHX, and make sure it's enabled. Make sure you also search DAS, and the DAS importer is also enabled with this checkbox right here. Okay, so we've installed both of those. Let me just install one more plugin, in fact. Um, I'll just install screencast keys because I'll need it for the sake of this tutorial. Okay, so now we can basically get on with what we have. So what we can do is press N, and you can see on my uh, side panel, it, a properties panel appeared right here. So if I press N, this will toggle on and off the properties panel. And you can see that we have two more plugins right now. We have the DAS setup and DAS runtime, as well as the MHX uh, plugin right here. Uh, these plugins right here are in charge of managing DAS models and also importing models from DAS. And MHX is allows you to uh, manage skeletons, uh, which one of our projects are going to be using. I open up the recent fault, the the file, the Yoroichi file. So I'm going to just go file open, don't save. And I'm just going to go into this one here. I'm just going to bookmark this folder, in fact. Uh, let me add a bookmark. And then now let me just open up Yoruichi, okay? So we're gonna start off from scratch. So right now what you should see is we have the Yoruichi model, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the collection. Yeah, so how this model manages the clothes here is you can turn on and off these outfits right here. Okay, so you can choose any outfit you'd like. Um, I am going to be using the KDA outfit right here, okay? And I'm just gonna turn off the Shi Hoin um, outfit there. Okay, so what I'm actually also going to do here, just for the sake of this tutorial, to make it uh, easier to manage these models, because I know I'm not going to be using these other models, so I can just delete them. Like if you if you are not sure if you're going to be using these models, like because it does, even though they're turned off, it does actually take up memory, which is really weird. Uh, well, in yeah, so what I can advise here is to write, so, so you can shift or control click all of these, or you can shift would be faster actually. If I just shift click here and I control click just to select the rest of these, and I'm gonna right click and I go delete hierarchy, okay? So this makes your file faster, okay? Um, if you are suffering performance concerns. Now, the other things I'm gonna do just to make my, my performance faster here is I'm just going to uh, turn on simplify, make sure simplify is on, and we have uh, max subdivisions here is zero, max subdivisions is six here. Okay, yep, so make sure that this is turned on here, the simplify, and make sure the max subdivisions are zero, okay, in the viewport. So this will speed up your uh, viewport a lot. Okay, so now what am I gonna do next? Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna pose the character here. So I'm gonna try to match the pose of my character like right here, okay? You should see that the skeleton is working properly. This is an MHX skeleton, which is why we need the MHX add-on enabled. Like if we don't have this MHX right here, this skeleton is not gonna work. Okay, so that's why we need to needed to install that MHX add-on. So let's get started here. So let's pose the character real quick. So I have a, an idea of how I'm gonna pose this character already because I have done this already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the torso bone. So we usually start off with the torso bone right here. And I'm just gonna pose it right down because I know that the character is gonna be crouching. Um, another common thing that you should probably have is uh, you can use a software called Pure Ref because what I did is I gathered a lot of references from my point folder um, and I just used the software Pure Ref. So I'll just show you how, to, like once you download and install it, it looks something like this. Let me just drag it over and you can just drag in files here, okay? So for example, I have just some references that are unrelated to this video because it like it's it's NSFW and I mean I couldn't very well put in non like NSFW stuff in here. So you can just dra drag in an image right here and then you can drag in a lot of other images that you like. You, maybe that you like the color of it or you like how it's posed. Just different things like different images that you can just place in here and you can just scale them up or scale them down 
and you can just place them however you like, right? And you can size up or down this canvas. You can scroll in, you can use middle mouse button to look around. So Pure Ref is a very, very handy software that I highly advise. You can just put it on your second screen if you have a second screen and use that as a reference. But anyway, we're not gonna be using that just for this here because I did use this already. Um, and let's put this down here. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna put her butt close to the ground. Okay, so now I'm just gonna drag her feet here. Okay, so I don't worry about the knees right now. I'm not really worried about those. And there is something weird going on with that. That's probably because the knees are messed up at the moment. So I don't need to worry about that. So don't worry about the knees. Focus on just the how the feet will be posed. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm just pressing G. Okay, so G means to move, right? So when I select a bone here, I, I press G to move it. Okay, and now what I'm doing is I'm just going to rotate this small bone here. I'm going to rotate it downwards so she's her heels are on the ground. Another thing that is a really good tip is to make a mesh. So I'm going to go Shift A to make a mesh. Uh, and I'm going to go plane. Okay, so I make a plane right here. I'm just going to scale it right up. Okay, because this allows you to know where the ground is so that you can ensure your character is not clipping through. Okay, so I'm just going to do this and now I'm going to adjust the knees now. Okay, so I'm going to adjust the knees just to the left side. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the left side and you might be like, wait a second, why is this moving both of them at the same time already? Because this X symmetry is on. Okay, so this button right here in the top right, it's blue, right? So if I just turn this off, I can move one side at a time, right? I can just move this left leg and I probably will have to. Um, and if I have them both on, then I can move both sides uh, that are named left and right the same. Okay, so I think she's a little bit too, oops, not that bone here. Let me just move this here. I wanna angle her forward a little bit. I think she's a little bit too, maybe I'll just try this. Well, I still need to get close to the ground, but I think she needs to be back. Uh, so I'm just pressing G. Okay, so I'm pressing G there. And yeah, I think that's approximately it. So basically, I've seen some different, I, I looked at some different references and we are looking like at how would this be physically stable? Well, she needs to sit on her legs, basically. She needs to sit on her feet. Otherwise, like this pose would not be stable. Okay, so basically how... This is, is she's leaning down here and she's just gonna lean like that. Perfect. Okay, so now you can start to see some of one of the problems of this model here. Um, the claws are not perfectly on here, on the left side. That is actually fine. So we're gonna fix this right now, okay? So um, what we're gonna do is I'm just going to go to this skeleton, this green skeleton right here in this sidebar here. The green running man, you know, this green running man. Yeah, okay, rest position. So I'm gonna go from pose position to rest position. Okay, so now that we're in rest position, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select the claw mesh here, okay? And I'm just going to add a modifier. So let me just add a modifier by going to the blue wrench icon here. So first of all, select the claw mesh. Second, go into the modifiers here. And actually, this is not even parented. I think that might be just the thing here. Let me just try this. Let me just bring this back to pose position. No, it's not. <laughs> That's not the problem. That's not the only problem here. It just doesn't even have weights. So let me just go back to rest position and let me just um, add a modifier here. Okay, so I'm gonna add a modifier and what I'm gonna search for is, I'm gonna search for the um, data transfer. Yep, okay. And I'm just going to select the source. I'm gonna click on the eyedropper and I'm gonna be the, select the source as the body, right? Because the body already has weights. So it's already painted to follow the skeleton. The skeleton are like the invisible strings that are pulling the mesh. You can imagine like a puppet and the invisible strings are these black things right here, the skeleton. Okay, we're pulling the mesh with invisible strings. Okay, so now we're just gonna, so we had the source as the body mesh here, this purple thing right here. Now we click back on here and I'm just gonna enable vertex data, vertex groups, okay? So we have this as we're copying the vertex groups by proximity. So how close it is um, to the hand, like these fingers here, they'll transfer their weights directly to the claws. Okay, so now that's fine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on generate data layers. 
In fact, I'm just gonna click on this top right here. You can see how I can move, if I click on the top right here, I can shuffle this one to the top. Just so then um, I can generate data layers again and I'm just gonna click on this, uh, this arrow here and click on apply. Okay, and this is where the magic happens when I click on the skeleton again and I go back to pose position You can see that the claws are now following the fingers, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now we fix that Let's get back to the pose, right? So what we want to do here is I really want to have these claws these IK hand targets just closer in Okay, so I just want these IK hands. I know that they are messed up at the moment, but I'm just going to bring this down Okay so in the pose, in, in the reference that I was using, so I'm gonna turn off X symmetry now so I can pose the things individually, right? So in the, in the reference that I was using, basically she was down really low, okay? So in fact, even kind of like that, um, let me just move the knees a little bit. Can I move the knees? I think that's, I don't know. Because she could basically touch, she was touching the ground with her two hands. However, I decided to make that a little bit more interesting, right? So we have, in this case, I had one hand touching the ground. A tip for posing ha hands and arms and stuff as well. Uh, let me just move that these target these targets here. So this is the direction that the shoulder points towards, right? And for this here, the pole target here is what the knee points towards, right? So if I a tip here is we always want it to be slightly bent, okay? Because if an arm is completely straight, it looks kind of weird in most circumstances. So if you can just bend it even just a little bit, this will also help with animation because if you ha have a something straight and it animates, it's gonna snap, right? It looks very weird when it, when it snaps. So if you just have something slightly bent, even just slightly, that'll be good enough, right? So I'm just going to do this. Yeah, I want it in a little bit something like that and rx to rotate in the x-axis right so i'm i'm using so i can use ry to rotate in the y-axis or rz to rotate in the z-axis so i think that's an interesting thing there okay now i'm just going to pose her other hand now okay so she's still sitting like in a pose that is like physically able to right so let me just rz to rotate that in the z-axis so I'm just pressing G to move it, and I'm just going to RX, okay? So we're just going to kind of move this. Let me move the shoulder so her arm looks less broken. Okay, so it's going to face outwards naturally. And I'm just going to pose this down, okay? So I want this on her leg. I won't mind the clipping for now. Okay, and I'm just going to go like that. I'll be honest, I was not very <laughs> um, finicky. I was not very picky with this one here. Oh, wow, actually that's quite, might even want to bring her up a little bit because now I just want this to align, right? To her knee, okay, so Rx, Rz, Ry, Rx. Can I just, why is this not bending the way I want it to? Oh yeah, because it's in the, it's an axis that is weird. So I'm gonna have to go R X and probably R Z. Nope, R Y. Okay, just to kind of have the fingers. Uh, and her wrist is kind of broken there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna raise her up a little bit. So then she her arm isn't as broken. Let's see. Because basically the problem here actually no that's not even the problem let me just control z to bring that back down problem is like her arm is just posed way too much out maybe if i can just place it down the thigh a little bit that would be more legit okay so yeah we don't have any real good method to have something outside something else you kind of just need to determine the clipping by eye and that's how it goes right um Still don't like this a lot because in my other image, basically this elbow is coming out way too far. But let me just pose everything else first and then I'll think about that. I probably should have posed this torso because it affects everything else. Okay, so I'm, I, basically in the in the image, what I was doing here is I was using, um, I was basically just posing this slightly to the right or to the left 
okay to ry just to rotate it a little bit i think that's too much because i wanted this to be subtle subtly like that and then to also adjust her head here to be to the slightly to that so it looks like she's looking like kind of like you know how like a dog looks when it when it looks to the side kind of like it looks a little bit cute kind of thing um that's kind of the effect that i want to emulate i'm not saying that women are dogs okay i'm not, I'm not saying that <laughs> I, I didn't say that okay i didn't say that just i'm just saying that um i wanted that effect okay so you can kind of just play with it um i kind of want to counteract that a little bit with maybe one of these other spine bones so maybe let's just have a look yeah that looks semi interesting just use references. There's nothing much to this. Um, just just use references. See how it looks. Pose it, and just you know, just try it again. Okay. Oh my God. I don't like how it how her fingers are slipping into the ground. It is not nice when they slip into the ground. So I'm just pressing G just to move these and just position it around. Maybe it's the shoulder actually. The shoulder is not in the right place. Maybe just let me just move it back a little bit so it seems a little bit more natural and we have that feeling going. Okay, I think I kind of like that. I'm kind of happy with that. But now we want to pose the tongue. Okay, so when it comes to posing MHX skeletons, so you can use the MHX add on. Okay, but I don't want you to come out under the misconception that you can always use this. Okay, because this is only if it's an MHX type skeleton. There are so many types of skeletons out there, okay? There's Rigify, there's Auto Rig Pro, there's uh, MHX, there's like all the custom skeletons that you can make as well, right? So as in like, you can make, those are only common types of skeletons. Everything else, you can make your own rigs, right? And you can make, you can name bones, whatever you want, okay? So, but this one here is, yeah, something, wait, let me just, okay. I need to update it. But anyway, so what you can do here is you can adjust these, which layers are on and off right so with this if you can't do that just go to this green running man and you can see that this has the same effect like if i just scroll down here and i just like turn on and off these things i'm looking at different layers here okay different uh, uh different bone layers it's because we want to organize our bones right into logical places like these are all the head related bones so i'll place them in one bone layer so that's what the bone collections are here okay so anyway let's just enable the head layer and i'm going to click on her mouth here so you might be under the conception that you can just go g and you can do this if you want if you just press g and you just move it out i think it looks a little bit awkward so what i like doing is just going rx so we're rotating and it's kind of like it's kind of like a hinge so her jaw is like actually in place and it doesn't dislocate um so i'm just going to move it actually quite quite wide here okay and now what we're going to do here is we're going to open the tongue okay so the tongue is really annoying for this model but it's okay uh what we can do is we can go to properties and it is actually under right here tongue ik okay so if you go tongue ik and you change it to one you'll see these bones appear here i don't know why this is not on by default but anyway let's just go shift select all these bones these tongue bones these like things here right and we're going to go g okay so because we kind of want let me just use numpad three and i'm just going to move it out first and now I'm just going to manipulate these. Okay, so it's just using a stretch to constraint. So it's kind of, we can stretch this as long as we want. Um, but let me just bleh, bring back some of that in. Um, and let's see how that looks. Let's place in a camera after this, I think. Because, whoa, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. The tongue is in the wrong place. Let me just press G to move that back into her actual mouth. And yeah, that's good. And let me just bring that. Nope. Let me bring this outwards a little bit so we prevent some of that clipping. And here we have the classic Ahe Gao face uh, that we all know and love. So let me just move that in. Okay. Now let me just bring in the camera and let's go, let's go to material preview mode. Okay. So material preview mode will actually basically show you the materials as you think. Um, but yeah okay and if you see that they are pink materials right here um what you're gonna have to do is make sure that you've downloaded the textures like if you're using another model like make sure you've downloaded the textures and unzipped the other textures as well okay but this one comes packed so you won't need to worry about uh the textures being pink 
um, which means that they're missing. But in this case, um, we're good. So I can just t turn off overlays just to have a quick look. Okay, so right now, what I don't like here is that her gaze looks kind of soulless. Uh, the tongue is okay, but I also need to pose the sides of the lips just to the sides of the tongue. So yeah, so let me just, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, I can actually just make it a little, if I press numpad one, just to go to front view here and tongue, it looks okay, but let me just pose the face first because the face looks a little bit weird. So let me just turn on the face layer and turn off the head layer so it gets less confusing. And let me just move this bone. Okay, so you can see that this bone doesn't move the whole thing. So what I would like to do is grab both of these bones here and just move it. Okay, so we have like a kind of thing there. And let me do the same to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to select those two bones just to pose the corner of the lip. Okay, so now that I've done that, let me just get out of this. And I think her tongue looks a little bit long. So I will actually just bring the tongue in a little bit. So let me just turn off the face bones there and just turn on the head bones. And let me just move these just back a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to move them back a tiny bit there. And I think that looks, let me just press numpad one, turn that off. Um, that looks okay, but let me just pose these two other bones here, okay? So I can just move this to the side. Actually, if I can just move this to the side a little bit. So it looks like it has a little bit of life to it. I think her mouth needs to be open a little bit more as well because that doesn't look right. So let me just move the mouth a little bit to RX just to move it a little bit open. And let's just, uh, let's have a look at like look at that. Mm, that's okay, but I think I can just go a little bit more. Okay. Let me just go numpad one. I still need to adjust the face bones then accordingly because they should be in like the corner. I think it looks okay. I mean, you can do better, but um, yeah, you can just take the time to pose it a little bit better if you'd like. Um, but I'm just going to move these two in. And I'm just going to move these two. Sorry, these two bones here, these two circles over. Okay, let's have a look at that. Yeah, that looks okay. Um, now, let's just fix that gaze a little bit as well. So let me just change to the head bone. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus. So I'm going to turn off the overlays and just press G. And I want this to, you can go like really ah hey if you really want. But I think it looks better just to have the eyes in the upper corner, but, but also like kind of looking at the camera. We can adjust the camera, like looking at the camera later, but yeah. My tongue still seems a little bit long. I just don't like how unnaturally long it is. So I'm just going to bring it in a little bit just so it looks a little bit less awkward. It is now clipping through. Um, how does this look? Numpad one. I don't know. <laughs> kind of just irking me. Yeah, good enough. Good enough. We'll, we'll call it good enough. I think that looks good from the front as well. Okay, so that's done. So we've done the posing and we've done the eyes. We've done all this. And yeah, this is a semi-decent pose, I would say. And it looks fairly good. Okay, so now we've decided that we want to add in our environment because the environment is very important for making this actually look legit. Because without the environment, this character is going to look very... Uh, like It's in a black environment. It's in a gray environment. It's not going to look nice, okay? An environment tells a story as well as the character, okay? So we need both the environment and the character. So how are we going to import our environment into here? So uh, let me just go back into the bathroom modern retro and I'm just going to open this as always. Why not? This is how the environment comes here, right? So now we want to import this into uh, another file. How do we do that? So we, I want to have this environment over here. So how we do this in a blender is through the append function. We are appending collections. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is if I just import one of these, it's only going, to, only going to import just this part here, right? So if I just right click and I go select objects here, it's just going to import this small part here. That doesn't make sense, right? I want to import the entire file. 
Unfortunately, Blender makes this really annoying, but what we can do here is I can just right click on the scene collection and go new collection. Okay, so this is a folder here and I'm gonna call this whole environment. So I just double clicked on it to highlight this name and renamed it to whole environment. Now I'm gonna shift select all of these here and left click drag them under the whole environment collection. So now we, we have one folder which has everything inside of it, all the objects. And I'm just gonna go click control S to save that. Okay, so now we've made that new collection. What we can do here is, let me just close this uh, file now. And what I can do here is I can just go file and append. And I'm just going to append the bathroom modern retro. I'm gonna to go to collection and I'm going to go to um, whole environment, right? So I'm just importing that whole environment collection. So you can see it imported under the clothes collection, which doesn't really make sense because it's not part of the clothes collection. So I'm just gonna drag it up to the collection here, okay? For the sake of completeness, I'm also gonna show you how to append another character model to your blend file. So we're gonna be importing the Ashy model that we downloaded earlier. First of all, I'm just gonna go back to my uh, folder where I downloaded Ashy. So I'm just going to make a new folder just for Ashy, why not? Just to organize things a little bit better. Um, but I'm gonna grab both this blend file and the textures raw file here. So we're gonna grab both of these, with, select them with control click and control X to cut them and control V to paste them. Now you see that we have this raw file here. So you have to download and install 7-zip. Um, I recommend 7-zip over WinRAR, but yeah, it's a free program. So what you can do from there is you can go right click on that, show more options, 7-zip extract here. Okay, so now we have the textures extracted in that folder here. Make sure that this Ashy textures folder is in the same folder as this blend file here. Um, so then it can recognize and grab the textures from there. I'm just gonna double click to open up this Ashy file. So this is even before I've even imported this. So you just wanna click on allow execution. So I'm gonna make sure that there is a collection which contains everything in this folder. So right here, we can see that this Ashy collection right here, you can see that it contains everything inside here. It, has, it contains the gun mesh, it contains the colliders, bakes, and the character itself and its meshes. So we don't actually need to create a new collection here, but let's say that we had separate collections for each of these. What you wanna really do is you wanna right click new collection. And what I always like to do is I like to, so I'm gonna double click on this collection that I just created. I'm gonna call it whole Ashy file or whole Ashy uh, character, right? And then I'm just going to drag all these underneath this collection here. I'm also gonna select all these because these are just parented. So I'm gonna shift select all of those and drag them under the whole Ashy character. Let's also drag these under the whole Ashy character. And you can see now we have a collection that contains everything, right? Because when we're appending a collection, you need to have everything underneath it. Otherwise you're only gonna import part of it, right? So that doesn't make sense. So you wanna import the whole thing, including the character and the uh, accessories. Okay, so that's why we have this. Now I'm gonna control S to save this file now. And now I'm gonna go back to my file where I wanna append this model to. So I wanna grab and add this extra character model to here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go file, append, okay? And I'm just gonna go into and select my Overwatch Ashy file that I've just saved and edited. And then I'm gonna go under collection. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna append the collection we just created called whole Ashy character, okay? So we're gonna append that. And you can see that we've appended it right here. Okay, so where have we appended it? We have appended it right here. Okay, so let me just uh, minimize some of this. Um, yep, this is fine, because it's in a separate collection. Um, however, what is not fine so fine is, you can see that we have all this extra trash out here. So um, let me just select all this. Okay, so I know that all this belongs to, um, so these all these meshes, right here, they belong to the Ashy character. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to press, select all those. So I selected all those meshes, right? Actually, let me just unselect this, these two spotlights because I know that's part of what I was actually just doing lighting. So I'm just going to press M now and I'm just gonna to go to whole Ashy character and I'm just gonna create a new collection under the whole Ashy character collection. And I'm gonna call this rig shapes, okay? 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm also going to open up this rig shapes collection and you can see that all my meshes are there and I'm just going to hide it. Okay, so I'm gonna click on this checkbox right here to turn off this rig shapes collection and now you can see it's all tidy again. Okay, so that's perfect for us. And now we have this uh, character app uh, appended. However, we're not done yet because remember we had a script. So not all characters um, have like Python scripts attached to them but this character does have Python scripts on it. So let me just show you how we had a look at that again. So if you press N here to open up your properties panel, the N key, and then you can see, if you go under item, you can see under the rig properties here, we have a UI here, which, so this pretty much selects between outfits. So you can press here to click to the next outfit and such. Um, however, um, you'll see when you click on the skeleton here and you go under item, we don't have this, there's nothing here. So how do we append, use this script here? Or we can actually just go to the scripting tab. Okay, there's no scripting tab. Uh, no, there is scripting tabs here. And what we do is make sure you've selected the skeleton here. Okay, so we've selected the skeleton here and then we click on this notepad here and you can see that we have this rig UI ashy.py. So you wanna click on notepad, click on the rig UI ashy.py and then Make sure that the skeleton is selected again, not the mesh or anything else. Make sure the skeleton, the ashy skeleton is selected. Then press the play button. Okay. Now when we go back to the layout tab, you'll see that we have successfully added the script, run the script against this selected skeleton. So you can see that we now have all the options that the previous file had. And that is how to append a character properly um, to another blend file. So, and just one thing I do, I do want to just pose it a little bit more. These knees look a little bit weird. So let me just pose this one up a little bit above that plane. And just ensure that that's not, nothing is clipping. Yeah, nothing's really clipping. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Whatever. Okay, so that's good. And now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to actually move this whole, whole environment. Okay, so let me just turn back on overlays here. And I'm just going to right click and I'm going to left click on this and I, what I like to do is uh, right click select objects. So let me do that one more time for you. Okay, so this is the whole environment collection, right? So I'm just going to, uh, in fact, let me right click and just give it a different color like red and I'm going to right click select objects. Okay, so this selects everything there, which is fantastic for us because we're going to move. Wait, the reason why I can't move is because I'm in pose mode, right? So let me just move back from pose mode to object mode. And I'm just going to press G to move this over here. Okay, so I'm just going to move this down and just over here onto our character, right? And we're just going to double check. So what I did here is I pressed shift tilde. Can you see in the right here, shift tilde, um, which means to, f to enter fly mode. Okay, so now I can use WASD to move, right? This is really, really, really valuable when moving across huge scenes. Okay, you can see I'm moving very, very slow when I use the WASD keys. So let me just scroll in with my mouse wheel so I can move faster, right? Okay, so now we're in here, which is great, but I kind of want everything to be um, here. Wait, let me just see. Let me just use the uh, middle mouse button to rotate. And I'm just gonna GZ this to move it down. In fact, let me just delete this plane now because I don't think we need it anymore. But let me just right click, select objects again, GZ. Okay, I see. So I'm just gonna do it when until it's not clipping, just a little bit. Okay, so she's she's flush against the floor, right? Which is good. She said, perfect. Okay, so she's flush flush against the floor, which is great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, move it a little bit. G Y, just to move it in the Y axis, and yeah, that looks okay. Okay, so before I do anything else, actually I should have added in a camera. That's my fault, I should have added in a camera, but it doesn't matter. Let me just go Shift A, and I'm, well actually I already have a camera here um, because this whole environment collection has a camera. But let's just delete these two cameras. I'm just gonna pretend like these cameras aren't here. Okay, so I'm gonna right click delete, and I'm gonna make a new camera. Okay, so I'm gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna go camera, okay? And the best way to do this is to pose your environment, like get into, so you just get where you want the angle to be. So I'm just gonna be over, yeah, I think over here is good. Let's just start with this. And then I'll just go control. So I, I wait, did I get my camera? 
Did I create my camera? I don't, I don't think I created my camera. I did create my camera. <laughs> okay, so let's shift a camera. And now let me just control alt numpad zero. Okay, so this create, this puts your camera exactly where you are currently. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to press N to enter my viewport. And I'm just going to go view. And I'm gonna turn on camera to view. Okay, so again, press N. Okay, press N to toggle the properties pa panel. Go to view and turn on camera to view here. Okay, now I'm just gonna use control middle mouse button to zoom out a little bit. So you can see this is really annoying. Like how am I gonna get this to actually see my character? Well, good question because what we can do here is I can click on my camera here, make sure you're in object mode, click on your camera and we're going to turn on clip start. We're gonna clip and we're gonna change this to maybe uh, yeah, around 120. 120, 120 should be fine. Okay, and I'm just going to now um, yeah, okay, um, so this is clipping, like, so we can't see the front part, right? And now, have I turned off camera to view? Let me turn on camera to view again, and let's see. So, I looked around for some interesting camera angles here, um, but basically, the best way to do this is if I just, let me just, um, in fact, I can do it without the environment, in fact, I would suggest. So, you can look for some interesting camera angles. So I'm just going to go to render preview mode and I'm just going to look for some interesting camera angles. So I would decide on like which camera angle looks the best. So this one looks okay here. Um, but the thing is, I just didn't think that this angle looked different because when you're creating a photograph or a render, you want to think what makes this unique. So we see a lot of images that are just straight on shots of like a pinup poster or something, right? So you could, for example, do a top down shot if you wanted, right? You could just go over here. Let me just use shift tilde just to like rotate my camera around with my mouse. So you could do something like this maybe if you wanted, like something like this. Um, this is a little bit more unique. Again, remember that the most important thing with this is to really zoom into the parts that are important. And what are the parts that are important in this image? Well, the girl, right? Um, so we want to zoom in to the girl, right? And that doesn't that means that we can we can we can actually clip things and it doesn't matter like we don't actually need the full body here but for this image here i'm just going to tell you in advance because i already have a example like had a an angle planned out so i'm just going to use like around this image i think around this here let me just have a look at this so i'm just going to turn off overlays so i can see this more clearly and something like this yeah, well, this wasn't the exact camera angle that I had, I'll be honest. Um, but it, I think that it looks interesting looking from the bottom up, right? Uh, this is a fairly uh, unique camera angle that's hard to get in real life. Well, I don't know how hard it is to get in real life because I don't do photography. But anyway, let's turn on environment here and let's see how it looks. Okay, so yeah, it's clipping to the floor. I understand. Let me just turn on my clipping. Oh my God. Okay, maybe I can't do this just with clipping. So let me just, I may need to adjust this just a little bit. Okay, so I'll just adjust it just a little bit here. Let me turn on that clipping distance to 135. So right now we're using EV, so everything looks wrong. So you don't need to worry like uh, right now. But anyway, I think, yeah, I think this angle we could even turn off the floor, honestly. Um, but I think this this is this is good. Yeah, I think this is good enough here. So I'm just going to go with this. And we can also mess with the camera angle as well. So we can also mess with the focal length as well. That is one thing I did neglect to mention. Um, I did so just for this shot here, I, I did use like a a quite a uh, let me just actually type this in. 20, okay, 40. Okay, so I did go something like this. So I did use 24 millimeters, um, but you can experiment with whatever you like. Here, I, I'm not goading you into cho choosing one or the other, uh, but basically if you have lower camera angles with an equivalent distance from the character, you can, you can basically uh, see more of an environment. And if you go with a high and high camera angle, uh, sorry, a high focal length, then you will see less of the environment. 
So it depends upon what you want to see. So I did want to kind of display the scene here. I wanted to display that, oh, you're in this lovely bathroom, right? And it's very mysterious, creates this ambience, this, you know, what is she doing in the bathroom? Probably having a bit of fun, you know, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So yeah, that's the kind of thing that I wanted here. So that's why I, I, I went with a lower uh, focal length. I think the environment also came with a lower focal length. So yeah, anyway, this is pretty good. Okay, so now let's start to light light this up, okay? So how I like to do my lighting is I'll just turn off my environments and let's actually turn this to cycles here. So I'm gonna change change this to cycles here and I'm gonna change this to GPU compute. Okay, so what I like to do here is um, to move, I can just move this and create a new window. So I just dragged from the top left there. And I like to have this as my window there that I can see. Okay, so let me just turn off screencast keys in this one window and I'll turn it on in my left window here. So I like to have a live preview of what I'm doing. So let me just turn it on here. Okay, so I'm just gonna press N. Okay, so, oh my God, no, stop changing the camera angle. <laughs> this is why you need to turn off uh, view, camera to view. Okay, so let's um, just turn off the, that. And now, what, excuse moi, I swear I turned it off. Okay, you need to turn it off in both windows. Okay, so now I've turned it off. I'm gonna turn on my uh, thing here. So you can see there's still lights. Why are there lights here in this scene? This makes no sense. Well, the reason why is because we have an HDRI here. So I'm gonna change this to zero. So we start off with no lighting. This way we can kind of light however we want. Make sure we're in object mode here. Let me just save this file here. And let me just go shift A and create a light here. Okay, so, so I know this is the finished one, but basically I did just create a user spotlight here to highlight, to highlight just the lips and the tongue, the ahigao face that we'd made. And basically the other ones, I'll just walk you through the process. I'm not sure we'll get the exact same lighting, but let me just show you the exact lighting that I did use. So what I did use here was I used um, some area lights. I'll put this file up for download. So don't worry about remembering this. You can just come and visit this file at any time. But I used an area light, I used a another area light in the shape of an ellipse that was pink. I used um, the spotlight. This is the spotlight for just showing her body more, but also let's have a look at this one here. So this here, wait, sorry, where's my actual spotlight? I swear that this was, okay, here it is. Okay, here's the spotlight that I used just to highlight that. But before I even do that, let me just show you why lighting is very important. You should probably spend the most time in your in making your image in lighting, okay? The reason why this is very important is because if I just choose to light up my subject like this, it looks very, very boring, okay? <laughs> Let me just show you exactly. So I'll create a comparison here. So this will be our base comparison. I'll render this out, in fact. So, and also there is a little bit of clipping here. Let me use sculpt mode here. Okay, so let me just, because I did notice that there was a little bit of clipping here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to the data here. So I went to sculpt mode here and I'm just going to create a new shape key. Okay, so under shape keys here, I just press the plus icon here to create a new shape key here. And let me just say adjustment. Make sure to change this to one, otherwise you have zero effect, right? And you sculpt and nothing will happen. And let me just sculpt this a little bit. Anyway, that was just annoying me, doesn't matter. Let's just bring this back to object mode here. So this, looks very, very, very boring. If you just use straight on lighting here and you just put it like, and and you don't include any shadow like this, this is called flat lighting, okay? Because the whole image is li lit exactly the same. And shadows are your friend in lighting, okay? So we need to create shadow because otherwise the eye has a very hard time in seeing 3D shapes, right? If you've sculpted or you have this lovely, lovely model and then you just light it like this, it will look terrible, okay? I'm just gonna use Snip and Sketch because I can't be bothered like actually rendering this out. Um, but I'll just put this on the side, okay? So I'll, I'll just have this as a side and I'll just compare our references here. So let me just compare these two renders here. So you can see that this is on the left here, what I rendered as the raw file here, okay? With, without color grading. And this is basically the flat version. If I just used a single light and I just lit it like this. You can see that this one looks so much more interesting, 
Okay, so it looks 10 times more interesting because I lit it pur purposefully, right? I created some rim lights here just to highlight these shadows here, like highlight the, the silhouette of the character while keeping a lot of the shadow on her body to show the 3D shape of her body better, right? So that's the reason why we need to light and spend a lot of time lighting. Okay, so it's very, very important. Okay, so now let's continue. So let's not do that and let's just start to actually light this. So what I'm gonna do here is I like to experiment and use all the different types of lights. So I'm just going to try by first of all, using some really close lights and let me just create this here. So I think this looks pretty nice here. So this creates a really nice, like um, it highlights the top of her hair. In fact, I can even sharpen this up by just decreasing the size here. If I decrease the size, it will light up less, but also it will create like, if you, if you see, I use a really diffuse light. It's like creating less sharp shadows, right? So if I do this, like this is good for creating more sharp edges like to the lighting okay so something like this and let me just play with the wattage here okay so this is how it looks so i kind of want a striking i don't mind yeah 11 is pretty good so yeah so this is like some really nice like this is pretty good here but let me just turn off this light here and let me continue lighting here. so just two lighting tips that i also wanted to show you is First of all, I wanted to show you how to pretty much scale your area lights, your point lights, and your um, your spotlights, right? So you can also scale the point lights and all of these lights here. So what I can show you here is what we can do is we can actually just grab a area light here, right? So we, ha we, we know this area light here. So I'm just going RX to rotate this in the X axis, right? But we can also scale this light as well. So to affect the area, for example, if we want a really narrow light, what I can do is I can s press S and X, right? To scale it in the X axis, okay? So you can see that we have a really narrow light here. Let me just turn down this um, power here. So this offers more control, if like basically over where our light goes. So let me just show you the difference. So let me just do it from the back. It's probably easier just to see the difference here. If I just um, bring it to the back and I just R Z this, to rotate it in the z-axis. Okay, so you can see here, if I just go sx again, so you can see what effect does this have. So it affects more, right? If I just go sx and I make this like a vertical light, or I could just, well, technically, if you go sx and you just bring it like the same size and you go sy, right? Um, oh God, oh God. Uh, if you go s, uh, z maybe? sz, sorry, that was my fault. So sz, and you can see that you can affect an entirely, you can have like a really narrow light like this and just use it to, uh, you can to, you can use it to affect your character, right? So if I have a really narrow light versus a really, a really um, large light, you can see how this differently affects it and you can control your lighting this way, okay? As well as the size here, okay? This, this, the size here is great, but you can also scale your lights as well, okay? And this does not just apply to the area light. Let me just show you with the point light as well. Okay, so we can also scale, actually, can we scale this? I'm not sure if we can scale this. I think it's just affected by, wait, let me just put this radius. Yeah, actually we can't scale a point light, um, but we can, uh, if I just go RX here, and RX, just bring it up, okay. We can scale this down as well. So the spotlight doesn't scale, like it doesn't, you can see that if I scale it in or out, it does actually makes no difference. Well, actually, no, it does. Never mind. <laughs> okay, <laughs> never mind. So you can also scale a spotlight. So if you just scale this normally, you'll see that there is no difference, right? If I just press S, there's no difference here to the light. It actually just helps you show visually where this light is hitting, which is, yeah, kind of useful. But you can also show cone from viewport. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a show cone. Yeah, this, this show cone option also does that, right? So you can just use this show cone option here. However, the more useful thing here is we can also just go something like SZ and you can see that I'm changing the shape of this light. For example, if I want to illuminate something like this. So this offers you more control over your, over your light. You can also go SX, for example, if you wanted your light to be a super wide light. Okay, so this offers you all kinds of control, which is very, very useful. Um, also, another tip for lighting, if I just use shift right mouse button, you can see I can move the 3D cursor anywhere. 
So I'm just actually going to move this on top of my character here, right? So basically I can just change, I can have this here. So this is my uh, light here. If you change, if you leave this as global and you change this to 3D cursor instead of median point, you can just click on this um, light here and just go RZ and you can see that I can rotate my lights around. Another thing that, so for example, if I have a couple more lights here, so I have this, these, I can rotate like, um, let me just grab uh, my area lights here, for, for instance, I can select all of them at once, right? And I can just go RZ and you can see, I can just see the effect of rotating my lights around my subject. So for example, if I wanted just to quickly see how would this look, look um, versus just having the lights behind, right? So this is a very, very useful thing that you can do and you can do it for multiple objects as well. Okay, so that's just one thing you can do. You can even just use the shift right, right mouse button and then you can rotate around a different point, right? So that, that's just some different ideas of how you could control your lighting better. The final tip that I have is you can actually just press shift A and you can create a plane for instance, right? And let me just rotate this in the X axis by using RX, right? And okay. So this is to control your lighting even more, right? So what we can also do is for instance, let's say that we liked the light on her torso here, right? But we didn't like, we wanted to get rid of this light on the face. So what we can do here is I can just put this plane right in front of her, right? And I can just put it right in front of her face because I want to get remove the light from her face, right? And what I can do here is I can also just, but this shades, this, this blocks the camera, right? We don't want that. So I'm just going to select this here and I'm going to go into the object uh, properties here. And I'm just going to turn off, go to ray visibility here. So ray visibility, under visibility, ray visibility, and turn off camera. Okay, so you can see just by using this, I can use it to block light without actually interrupting with the camera. So I can actually just control my light just to be here, right? So this really helps, especially with lights that you can't control and don't have as much control over, such as an area light here, right? So if you had an area light, this area light, wait, let me just change this back to um, median point, um, RX, you can see that it's nothing is getting through there and I can actually light this better, right? So it's pretty cool here. So that's one way you can use to block light. Um, I think you can even, <laughs> I think you can even do it for certain lights as well, but don't ask me how the material setup is because I don't know how to do that, but you could probably just block it for one light for maximum control. So I'm gonna add in another light. Okay, so what I want here is I want to experiment. Okay, so I don't want to use the same lighting setup, like the same three-point lighting setup. Like, why do you need to in 3D? There's no point, right? You can use as many lights as you want. I'd rather just experiment and try a lot of different uh, styles So and use a lot of different types of lights rather than... Oh, God. Yeah. The lag. Okay. So I'd rather use, so let me just use Alt R to bring it back to the original rotation. I'd rather use a lot of different types of lights. Okay, so let's just experiment and let's see what looks nice. Okay, so I'm just going to try and, so the area light gives you the most control here, right? So you can light a very small area here, if, like because you can pretty much point your light wherever. Okay, you can even, you can adjust. So what I like to do here, I'd like to try is to R, X, Z. And I'd like to light just the side from her body, just like that, okay? I wanna see how this looks. Okay, but this is a little bit too much to the side. Let me see how this looks here. This is a little bit too much. I wanna try that. Mm, no, that doesn't look really good. Okay, so let me just up the wattage first. And let me just down the spot size. And I want to really focus this. How am I gonna get this across? Okay, so let me just move this m further away from her. Okay, yeah, this doesn't work. <laughs> this doesn't work. I don't like this light. Um, let me try this again. I do tend to favor area lights. I do like area lights a lot because I pretty much use area lights everywhere in my lighting. Um, and if I don't, if I really don't know what to do, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just start with the backlights because the backlights pretty much always look good. 
okay they make your they really make your character stand out and we can just add both these lights in and you can see just how much even just that much does right so if i just rotate this in the z axis okay so this means that it'll be oops not the z axis let me rotate it in the x in the y axis here oops not that axis let me rotate it in the x oh, come on let me rotate this in the x axis so i'll just go z axis so rz and this means that i'll get more of that i'll get it more hitting i'll get it less of this thing here because if i go r r z entirely you can see that this will pretty much it will it will light the whole thing so it won't actually work so i want to go r z and i want to have this just light use it as a backlight as a rim light okay so i'm just going to go like this like that okay um I like the shoulder, so I'm just gonna. I like that effect there. Okay, cool. So we kind of have like a ninja. It <laughs> looks like a ninja master just from that. But let me just add in. So we need a little bit more light on the central torso area. So let's just have a look. Let me try some point lights. And let, look, I didn't even try to adjust the. Let me just turn off the point light here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to play with this power as well so I'm just gonna drag it up and then just see how it looks and see if it needs to be more subtle yeah that looks pretty good um, let me just bring in the point light I can also play with the area as well don't forget to play with the spread okay Mm-hmm, interesting. I do like it better spread, in fact. Um, okay, and let me just play with the size as well. More diffuse, less diffuse. Okay, it's a cool-ish effect, but mm, I don't really like that. I'd rather it highlights the shoulders, just so we can have a good cutout from the background, right? So now let me just go shift A and I'm going to bring in a point light here. As I said before, what I like to do with point lights here is I like to just bring down their radius. So I just have it as one set, actually. Just as one centimeter, but yeah, that's fine. But let me just turn down the brightness here. Can I go 0.0, 0 0.1? Should be able to do that right wait let me just bring that back to its original position that's interesting i like that um but i would like a lower wattage and and so actually that looks pretty good so i'm just going to turn that on and off that's a good fill i do like that it doesn't brighten it too much and it maintains some of that shadow but it also fills in the area so we do have some information and remember that I like my images, I lean towards my images being a little bit brighter because for Twitter and other mobile devices, they're usually a lot darker than what your screen can see. Okay, so I will light this a little bit. I will try to add some more light here. Okay, so let me just try at the spot. Okay, so RZ, RX. Okay, so now I'm just going to go for the actual light that was kind of the key point of this image. If you have a look um, at my reference, or well, not my reference, my actual finished image, because I wanted to create the same look as the, like having like a blindfold basically, because um, I wanted to focus the attention on, um, well, the face, yeah, like the bottom area of the face. So let me just try that. Okay, so I'm just going to focus this down, okay? Because I thought it's interesting, it looks kind of like, almost like the the near Automata, like androids, how they have a blindfold on. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to make my image unique. So I'm just going to bring down my spot size. I'm just going to just bring it lower. And you can see we're kind of creating that. I think there's a little bit too much light there. 
I'm going to bring down my spot size even further. I'm going to play with the pal and the blend I'm just going to bring up because I want this to blend in pretty seamlessly and let me just have a look by zooming in I think that's a little bit too too powerful so let me just bring that down okay so now I can I can also start incorporating some different kind of color it into my image as well um, I don't actually like how this is um, can I just get the angle of this a little bit better I would like to kind of just bring this up a little bit and just angle it a little bit better I can just zoom into this I may need to repose that just a little bit. It looks a little bit off. Yeah, it does look a little bit off, but that's okay. We can adjust that. Okay, anyway, so let's just continue. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start to actually make some of these, these backlights here. This light here, I'm gonna make it a different color. I kind of like just a subtle, subtle purple let's just see what kind of works here so that doesn't work so you want to keep around the white if you go way too neon this looks like you're in like you're in a a club or some other environment because the the colors are too saturated right so i want to keep around white can just go dip a little bit into the color and I think that usually looks best um, I'm just thinking how would this look looks decent I mean but let me just try I do kind of like keeping the white for this backlight here um, I think that's still that spotlight just looks too bright that's why it's irking me um, I will have to add in some more fills Right, that's, that's fair enough. Now let me just add in some more. I think I might just add in some a point light here. Okay, so I like to light without the environment and then bring the environment in later. Okay. So I'm just going to Um, bring this down a lot. Oops. So let me just control Z that. A little bit of load. You can see I can kind of create something like that, 100 milliwatts. Let's see. I can kind of create some interest. So what I liked, what I did here for this image here was to bring some interest to the claws, right? So I just added a little spotlight here. I think it's a little bit too bright. Let me just divide that by two, divide by two. Um, we can divide by two again. That's still too bright. Um, I can just bring it further away from the claws maybe. Well, actually, no, I kind of want that glint. And I just made it like a different purple. Like a slight, uh, yeah, but it needs to. That's too close to the hand. It's just a little bit too noticeable. I can just have it like this. Let's let's see if I add and delete. Maybe a little bit more than that. Let me times that by two. And I don't 100% like how this, where's my other light? Was it this light? Hmm. I'm just contemplating if I can just get this. 
a little bit bright. Let me just divide it by two. Uh, let me just see. It's okay, actually, just at one, I think, is okay. Oh, even then, it's a little bit pushing it. Let me go 0 0.8. And let me just see if I can just play with this color. Nah, I'll keep it white. I think it's white. White is the best here with that light. Okay. Now, so what I'm going to do as the final maybe light, let's just see. So... Let me also um, go back to the skeleton and just pose that a little bit because I think let me just press N here and let me just go turn on the skeleton and let me just go to face and let me just pose the lips just a little bit. I think we're a little bit just just a little bit too far up. If I can even just bring the head in a little bit. I'm just going to close the jaw. Hello, please don't lag. Okay, RX. Oh god, the lag is phenomenal. Let me bring this back into solid mode and let me just go to RX. Yeah, I can see what, what is wrong about there, actually. Let me just move this here. Turn off face, turn on the head. I think the tongue needs to be to the right. So we just, oops. I just move this to the right a little bit. And then I also close the mouth just a tiny bit. No. Yeah, fair enough. I think something like that is good enough. Um, okay, so let me just bring this back to object mode. And I think I am done here. Let's have a look. So let's have a look at uh, how our lighting's turned out. I think we need one more. I'll add in one more just to the left side, coming from the left side. RZ, this one, and I'll just bring this size down incredibly. I also bring the brightness down incredibly. I really want this just to shine like this. I can get, even get an angle behind. I'm just curious how does an angle behind look like. How does this look? What does this add? So I'm just going to turn on and off the light. Air, it's too large first of all. but also the brightness is too large. Um, I don't really like this one, so I'm just going to bring it to the other side. That's actually okay here, actually, as a, as a light like that. I want to keep the same like purple bluish. I kind of it's it's kind of a nice highlight, so I don't actually mind that. So I'll just bring in another area. And I'll just because I really want to just light up the side a little bit, but not too much. Um Ellipse, but then again, like the ellipse does not really make a difference, honestly. Um, I don't know about 
about this one. This one doesn't really grab. No, it doesn't. Doesn't feel right. Um, I maybe grab. I'll grab one more point. And I'll just grab it and I'll put it maybe to the left. Maybe this one will look better. Because I just think that the light needs to be there. Am I wrong? I might be wrong here. Let me just feel how it... That doesn't look bad, actually. I like it back in the other position here. Uh, maybe divided by... Maybe 300 milliwatts. Yeah, okay, that, that's probably decent enough. <laughs> okay, because the light, this this image will get brighter once I bring in the environment. So let's just bring in the environment and let's see how this looks and we'll adjust the lights as needed. Okay, so you can see that the light, the environment has actually just blown out all these. So the reason why is because of this material right here. So let me just click on the, this one here. Um, I think it's this one, right? If I just go to the shading tab here, because you can notice that sometimes materials have emission and that is why um, they can light up things. So is this the one with the emission? No, it is not. I'm looking for this one right here. Yep, so I just click on the mesh and then I'm just going to bring down the emission to maybe like, maybe just like two or something, like 1.8. And let's just have a look at that. Let's have a, look, have a look and see if that is better. Yes, that does in fact look much better. Um, but there's one thing that we did not account for here. So because the lights here... Okay, so yeah, so this light here is actually being blocked by the floor. So what I can actually do is I can just solve this problem by going to the shading tab here right now one light is being blocked by the floor and this often happens when you have a light behind some environments so what you want to do is you want to click on the mesh here I want to make this floor see-through you can also do the same to desk or any other material here so what I can do here is I can click on this this floor mesh and I'm just going to go shift a I'm going to search for um, the light uh, light path node and I'm just going to put it down. Okay, second thing I also want is I want the transparent BSDF. Okay, so I'm just going to click on Shift A to make a new node, transparent BSDF, and I want the mix shader. Okay, so I want to bring this material output to the end here. And how this is going to work is we are going to basically use a mix shader. So I'm going to Shift A, mix shader, and I put this at the end. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have transparent BSDF connect to the first shader and principal BSDF uh, go to the second. Now the way we're going to determine like is this transparent is if it's a camera ray. So basically if it's a camera ray it's going to use the second one right. So if it's a camera ray it's going to use the normal material. If it's not if it's just a non-camera ray then it's going to just use transparent BSDF. So therefore, the light can actually go through. That's why we are seeing a small difference in the lighting compared to with and without. Um, actually, I think this actually looks better without, I'll be honest, because the light is bouncing, the, the floor is bouncing the light everywhere, which is not actually conducive um, to good lighting. Um, let me just turn off the environment for a second.
So I'm just turning on and off the light. So yeah, this one here, I'm going to delete this light here because I think it actually makes the lighting worse. But that's just one tip to add in a, like to make sure that your lighting stays consistent between like two things, right? Okay, so the, hmm. I just don't like how the light here is. We don't have enough light here. It feels like, let me just turn off the overlays one more time. Yeah, it just feels like we don't have enough light here. So let me just turn off the environment. I'll do one, I'll add one more light. Okay, so I'm just going to add one more light here. I'm going to go and add a light. I'm going to add a spotlight. I'm going to try just light this area here. But I want to go like reduce the power. That doesn't actually look bad. That's actually okay. I kind of like that. Let me just. Yeah, it's a nice fill light. It doesn't interrupt the scene too much, but it also gives in crucial information here. Yeah, that's actually pretty decent, <laughs> surprisingly. Um, let me just play with the color and I just want to, just curious how it looks, but I think it's going to look best white, honestly. Yeah, I think it looks best white, honestly. So let me just press control Z to bring my back, bring me back to the white color, please. Okay. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Yep. That looks good. Okay. So what we're going to do is I, just so that, like, cause when we add this light back in, or we add the environment back in. So that's good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, basically just render this out. So you can use an HDRI in the background. I found that even just bumping up the HDRI a little bit kind of just looked bad. Because I, I kind of want this to be like a night scene. So if I just bump it up like that, you can see it looks kind of bad. So I just took it out altogether. If I can just bring this back to zero. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to add a bit of... Uh, depth of field. So I'm going to add in a depth of field. And I'm going to turn on view, uh, viewport display and limits here. So you want to turn on viewport display limits and just bring back the distance here. So you'll see something. Let me just get into here. So we've turned off overlays here, but um, if you have a look, if I just click on the camera and I just go and I bring it back, you can see that there is a cross. So this is what it's focused on, right? So we want to focus on the character, right? So I'm just going to bring it like that over there. Perfect. Okay, so now if I just go to um, this right here, I can actually bring stuff in and out of focus with the f-stop. Like, so I could go really blurry, something like that. <laughs> but obviously we don't really want that. So what I... I, I just like to keep it subtle, honestly. So like 2.4 is okay for me. Like you can even have no, I don't think this, this photo really needs the depth of field, but yeah, so I don't like to overemphasize it. Like there's no need to overemphasize. We have an interesting image here. We should just keep the focus on the interesting image. We shouldn't like use tacky gimmicks. Okay, so yeah, this is fine. Okay, so let us now render this out and I'll show you how to uh, color grade this. So one thing here, I did just press N, I went to view, camera to view, and I adjusted just the character just to be a little bit more in the center. And I turned off the depth of field because it was a little bit too distracting and made the rest of the image blurry. Environment tutorial. Okay, so now I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this from FFmpeg video to OpenXR. And full credit for this method goes to Polyford. Um, and I'm just going to go, so you can use the RGBA as well. That's fine. Um, if you have like a background, which you want to like insert in later. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this from uh, zip to DWAA lossy. But the question is why go through all this trouble? Why, why can't you just render as PNG instead of EXR and then just be done with it? The reason why is because this here 
it gives us a lot more data that we can work with and we can change the colors of the image a lot more easily if we render in EXR and follow this workflow. So before I render this out, I'm just going to go to the camera and I'm going to make sure I have the right samples here. Okay. So what I like to do here is turn on denoise is already on by default, which is fine. You can use optics. Um, sometimes it's actually better. I think if we don't denoise it here, because I don't know, I just, I just feel like it makes it a little bit smooth, which sometimes actually ruins it a little bit. Um, but I'm going to use a reasonable amount of samples, maybe like 64, like 128, in fact, maybe. And just make sure that I have the correct settings here. So this is fine. Let me just check if I have 1920 by 1080. All right. So yeah, so this is it's currently 4K. I don't want 4K. I just want 1920 by 1080. And this can load in and I'll just go 100% instead. And I'll save, uh, make sure what you go edit preferences, you go to system and make sure you're using optics here. Okay. You can turn on both of these and this is fine here. Okay. This is fine. And I'm just going to save. Okay. So now this will render the fastest. So I'm just going to render image. Okay. And yeah, so it's all rendered out. Um, actually, I kind of think that I could have zoomed in a little bit more even because I, I, I kind of see a little bit too much of the environment, honestly. But in this case, I think it's it's good enough. So that's good. So let me just go image, save. And I will just save it in this here. I'll call it uh, uh, image. So environment, character plus environment. I'm also going to render one which is just the character, right? So I'm just going to... Um, do this and I'm just going to render one as just the character itself. The reason for this is just for compositing later. So then I have just this and I can cut it out, right? So basically I have this and I'm just going to go image save and I'm just going to call this um, character only. Okay, so this is perfect. So I have both of those um, done and now let me just go to DaVinci Resolve now. So let me go open up DaVinci Resolve. And this is where we actually color grade the images. Okay, so color grading is very important for the final look of your images. So is compositing it, like adding dust and other overlays in Photoshop. I'm not gonna go over that, but I will go over color correction. Okay, so let's start off. I'm gonna go to my one that I already finished, but let me just go over all the steps to do it. Okay, so first of all, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go to where I rendered. So let me go to just in the most left one and I'm just going to go and drag in my art. Uh, here it is. And I'm just going to look for environment tutorial. I just went to the my renders folder and then I just grabbed both of these. So I, I can just click and just drag this one in. Okay. So if you want to see, like if you have an animation here and you want to import as image sequence, all you need to do is just change the frame display mode from individual to sequence. Okay. So sequence will allow you to import an entire uh, animation if they have named the same and they're going like one, two, three, four, right. That will allow you to do that. Okay. So what we can do here is we can actually just import this into our file here. So I'll just bring in this new one. So this will be my second one. So you can see right now it looks terrible. So why does it look terrible? I don't understand because basically Blender doesn't know how to process this color data here. When remember we downloaded the Filmic Resolve LUTs, so Filmic Resolve LUTs, right? From GitHub, from Sabotka, right? So now we're going to actually put this into our uh, DaVinci folder, right? So in order to download these LUTs, you just need to click on this download bottom in the top right. So click on this and click on download zip. So I won't do so already, because I've already downloaded it, but you should get this filmic resolve master.zip file. This zip file here, we're gonna put this into the right one. So we're gonna go file, we're gonna go project settings, go to color management, and I'm just going to go open LUT folder, okay? So right here, I already have this folder, which is filmic, but normally you won't have this folder called filmic, right? So I'm just gonna even just delete this folder here. Okay, I'm gonna delete this folder, and I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go new folder, I'm going to go filmic. Okay. I'm going to put in that new folder and I'm now going to 
copy my master zip file there. So I'm just going to go to Filmic and just paste it there. And then I'm so just by using Control C, Control V to copy and paste and show more options, 7-zip extract here. So you'll need to install 7-zip if you want. Um, but actually, so let me just grab all these LUTs out here, these cube files. And I'm just going Control X and Control V. And now just to, cop, to cut and paste those. And now I can delete all those. So now what you need to do here is once you've opened your LUT file folder, you'll just update lists and you go save. Okay, so now we've actually, now when you import your LUTs, you will have those extra LUTs. So here's the tricky part where it gets to actually color grading this. We want to go to the color section here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add, so we have DaVinci has a color node based system, right? So, so before we do anything else, actually, we need to go file project settings and we need to change the color here. So color management, we need to go to color management and we need to change this from uh, DaVinci RGB, Y RGB to DaVinci R Y RGB color managed. And we want to turn off automatic color management and change this to HDR DaVinci wide gamut uh, intermediate. Okay, so just save that and we're good there. So we have our original image just here. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start by adding the base encoding. So I'm actually just going to add two nodes first. So I'm just going to click on this node here and press Alt S. Alt S makes a new node, adds a new serial node. If I can just delete this, click on this and I just go uh, node, add node and add serial, which means just add a node straight after this node. So I'm just going to press Alt S and I'm just going to right click node label, going to call this base encoding. Okay, the second one here, I'm going to call it Filmic Blender. Okay, so right click node label and just go Filmic Blender. Okay, so this will convert it back into a normal color space so we can actually work with it. Otherwise, it's going to be really annoying to work with. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to uh, right click and go LUT and I'm just going to go to Filmic. Okay, so this is the folder that we just added and we're going to add scene linear to base. Yes, yes. So scene linear to base encoding. Okay, so you can see that this looks like filmic log here. Okay, but we also need to imply one more thing before it looks like how we saw in Blender. So we're going to add, we're going to right click the second node here, and go LUT, and we're going to change this to filmic, and we're going to change this to filmic base contrast. Okay, so this now looks like how we saw it in Blender, which is fantastic. Full credits for this goes to Wakaz uh, Kazi, um, who has made these brilliant, brilliant tutorials. I literally just copied his tutorial. There are many, many awesome tutorials on YouTube that I would highly suggest you watch to manipulate your color into the way you like it. Okay, so we're just going to be following pretty much the same thing he does, and I'm just going to be showing you how to do it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add in a bunch of nodes. So I'm just going to organize these nodes here. So I'm just going to have this here. Let me just move all these. You can ignore these. These are basically just for my own reference here. So I'm just going to keep pressing Alt S. Okay, so I have three nodes here. Press Alt S again, and I'm going to have another three nodes here on each level. And let me just Alt S again. I'm going to grab, grab this one here. And we're going to use this method of color grading. Okay. I know it's annoying, but this will ultimately lead to a better result. Okay, so now we have all these nodes here. We're just going to label them. So I'm just going to click on this. I'm going to go to node label. I'm going to call this highlights. I'm going to call this printer lights. I'm going to call this primary. I did name it with L I T E S. You can use like L I G H T E S L I G H T S, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so we're going to do a teal and orange look, um, but we can really change this to anything. Okay. So, um, and this one is the look to, um, this is the look adjustment. So look to is teal and orange, right? So look teal and orange and look adjustment. And this one is the glow and the grain. Oops. I had too many notes and the grain here. Um, I will also show you another color grading setup that I use, but this one is actually better. Okay, so overall, this is better. I suggest this one. So I'm just going to delete those final nodes. And there, there we have our current thing here.
for these color wheels here. They do look very intimidating at the start. However, just a quick overview of what these are. So we have lift. So this is the shadows here. So this manipulates the color of the shadows. Um, gamma manipulates the uh, basically the mid tones, which in which usually includes skin tones, and gain in uh, includes just the the brightest parts of the image, so the highlights, right? And the offset uh, moves the entire image equally. First of all, we're going to start with the primaries. Okay, so we're going to look at this one here, and usually what we will do is we'll bring up our scopes here. Okay, and I'm just going to click on this button here to pop them out. Okay, so I like to have the parade here. So we can use the parade and the vector scope. So vector scope gives us an idea of balance and parade gives us also an idea of just like, like are we clipping on like each of the color channels? Okay, so right now it's actually pretty balanced already in this image. So we actually don't need to do that much for our primaries and printer lights. But what we'll usually do is we will bring up the contrast, like if we need to. In this case, the image is already kind of there, I feel. So I can even just bring, I, I honestly think that we can just bring down the, the contrast just a tiny bit because th this image is very high contrast already. But if your image is not high contrast, you can bring up the contrast here. Bring that like hugely. Okay, so I do want to just leave it just a little bit like that. But okay, and then the other thing we also want to do is we also want to adjust the image. So if it's dark enough or light enough. So for example, we wanted to adjust just the offset here. Um, and we can just bring it a lighter or darker. I think that actually, if we just bring it, because we want to get a base grade. The idea of using the the primaries and the printer lights is that we get a base grade. So that looks accurate. Okay, so the printer lights here is used basically to, um, we want to make sure that this image is correct color wise. For example, if there was a lot of magenta here, like, or something else, then we want to cancel that out by increasing the green, like, or, um, or, in, or doing something else. In this case, like this, this image is already pretty balanced, I would say. So we don't actually need to increase or decrease the green, the green or the blue or anything, right? I think this image is already pretty balanced. So 25, I'll just bring this back to 25. But if we needed to increase or decrease, we could just use like this, this offset node here. So in fact, let me just, I think it is a little bit too warm. So I'm just going to bring down, I'm gonna bring up the blue just a tiny bit. Not too much, maybe just a tiny bit there. Okay, so let me just control D just to see the effect. And you can see that we're kind of just balancing it out a little bit so that we don't have as much green. So because once we have this base grade, we can kind of color grade it however we want. So we decreased, I think actually, so if we increase this, yeah, I think it, it could use a little bit more dark here. Okay, so that's fine. So we just decreased the offset and we decreased the contrast as well. Okay, so we've made the image a little bit darker, we reduced the contrast. Now, to the next thing, we wanna actually bring in the, the teal and orange look. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go towards the green. So I'm just gonna really go for this here. Um, and I'm just going to just bring it down here and it doesn't really matter too much. So just don't worry about too much because what we're going to do is we're going to cancel this out by changing the gamma here. Okay. So we're just going to add in some magenta. Okay. So I'm just going to add in some magenta to cancel a little bit of that out. I can just get rid of the blue. I don't want so much blue in this. So I'm just going to just adjust this blue right here. And this, let me just bring it up a little bit. Just can canceling it out with some magenta. Okay, so kind of have it like that. Okay, so that's fine there. And so what we're going to do with the next one is this teal and orange. So this one is the no label. So teal orange correction, sorry. This one should be like if we look at this label here, it's correct. Let me just call this correct teal orange. So we need to have anchors, right? So we need to have the blacks being black. We need to have the, the white to also be white. And then 
we also need the skin color to be a skin color, right? So we need to go to the log wheels here and we're gonna adjust the shadows here. So we're gonna adjust this shadow to add in a little bit of um, magenta. So you can see that now the blacks are actually looking black here. So this is now black by just adding a little bit of magenta. And we're just gonna even just add a little bit more. And you see the blacks there. And then now we can use this mid-tone and we can actually just make it a little bit more, uh, bring in a little bit more of that orange. So it looks like skin tone. Yeah, that looks like skin tone. Um, Cause she is uh, dark skinned. And then now we're just going to the highlights here. The highlights look, okay, they look white. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to like, bring down the lift here. So I clicked on the look adjustment node here and now we're just going to, so we can bring down the shadows here by just adding a little bit. Okay, so we're bringing down the shadows because well, the, we, we want the skin to be actually dark, right? So if I just bring it up, okay, no, actually I kind of like where it is at the moment. So I'm going to leave it at zero actually, but what I can also do is the gain here. I can just bring it down a little bit. No, actually I can't. That's fine actually. I don't think we need to add this, like change this one. So what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to select the highlights of this image, mainly over here. If I can just select this highlight here. I pretty much clicked on the eyedropper here. And then I clicked on this here. You can see that it doesn't actually change um, that. So I'm just going to press shift H so you can see what I'm selecting here. And what I'm going to do with these highlights is I'm actually just going to bring them. So first of all, I'm just going to uh, make this a little bit more smooth by adjusting the bars. So I have a, a smoother, more like gradual fall off here. You can see it's slightly smoother. Wait, let me just this experiment here kind of thing because we have these really bright highlights i think we can just bring them down a little bit if i press shift h again and now let me just adjust these highlights so i'm just going to go here and i'm just going to so i can just bring it down a little bit maybe just a tiny bit so maybe 0.94 okay it's just to bring those highlights down okay so what you can also do is you can also add like a, just a little bit of contrast um by editing these splines. So you can just go like this, editable splines, and you can edit this here. And I'm just gonna edit it just slightly so I can add in a tiny bit of contrast. And you know what? I'm actually just gonna add in the glow here. And I'm just gonna go effects, glow. And I'm just going to drag in this glow right here. Okay, and I'm, I'm just going to change this to, instead of uh, composite type, I wanna change it to soft light. And I'm just going to uh, change the shine threshold to that. And let's change the spread to that. Okay, so you can see it's too strong. So we're just going to bring up the global blend here and just let me just go. So this is the, so we're just gonna add in a little bit, just something like that. Okay, and we're just going to um, pretty much do that. And let me just change, actually, in fact, the spread a little bit. So we can have just a little bit of a punchier image. Okay, that's good. And what we're going to also do is I'm also going to change, add in the grain here. So let me just look for the effect grain. And just grab it in. And we can just change this a little bit. So I'll just change this to um, 16 millimeter um, archival print, which is pretty heavy. So you can actually start to see it in like the clothing right here. So you can see that they've added the grain. Okay, so that's good, but <laughs> let's see how we can change this look up a little bit. So we can make this look actually look more extreme by just going to the look, the look and we can just bring it into the teal and orange a little bit more, right? So we can even just bring it down. Like even more. So we just lift up the gamma a little bit to counteract that. that. 
and what we can get if we just correct this here is we can get this here so I can just go to the log wheels and just change that shadow to add in a little bit more magenta and you can see that we're starting to get like this really teal and orange look because I think my image is too high contrast so I just reduced the contrast and I reduced the highlights actually so let me just reduce the contrast so I'm going to reduce the contrast here I'm also going to reduce the highlights in this image so we can get some more but yeah so pretty much that's how <laughs> that's how I color graded this image you can also fiddle with this so from there what you can do is you can just open up your galleries your power grade and you can just right click uh, grab still to add in a grade okay so um, so this is one of the grades um, you can also just add in like this you can see how this other grade would look um, and I'm just going to add in all these into the uh, description below um, so you, uh, like all these power grades so that you can use them for yourselves what you could also do for example with this look teal and orange is you could just change this all together by just going into the um, color wheels and you could for example like reverse it right so you could just use this and you could use um, the gamma and just reverse this right so we could just counteract some of that and you could just even just go with like a look like that but what is wrong with this currently is the if I go to the back to the log wheels for the correction teal and orange um, we do need to change the shadow shadow should be less orange right so if we want to be less orange, we want to be adding some blue in, right? So if we can just make sure that this this black is actually black here. So black. And then like the white is still kind of white. And then we can kind of just go with a look here that looks kind of like a golden kind of uh, thing. So we can just bring back this. So skin tone actually still looks like skin tone. And yeah, so we have another look right here. So you can pretty much generate as many looks as you want. So you can see that we have a blue, like a, like a, a golden kind of, like a teal and orange kind of look, and even just like this other high contrast look here. How can you apply a power grade? So here we have just the single node again, like we have from the start. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to click on this, double click on this here, and you can see that I can apply a power grade at any time, right? So I can actually just double click on any of these, so I'm just going to control Z and you can see I can go through cycle through these different looks. So I can even just hover over it and it shows how this would look with my current selected. So you can see here, I can just scroll through and just use any of these, which is really, really powerful because we can just apply any of these uh, uh, color grading that we create color grades that we created for ourselves. And it's just fantastic. Okay. So I've also shared all these power grades that you can use yourself. So if you want access to all these power grades here, I put a link in the video description. It's completely free. You can just download it from the Google Drive link there. Um, and I've put all these uh, LUTs right here so that you can use them yourself, right? So again, I've labeled this uh, pretty, uh, what, what I think is pretty understandably. So these ones are RG YRGB. This means that you need to use file, uh, file project settings and you need to use DaVinci YRGB, okay? And Rec 709 scene, okay? So that's what you need to use for color sprays, okay? But for these other LUTs here, if I just control Z, you can see that the managed wide gamut look doesn't really work that well here, right? So if I just use file project settings, because it says managed wide gamut, this means that this LUT must be used with the managed wide gamut. So I'm just gonna go file project settings, change this to color manage, first of all, that means the manage part and change it from automatic color management to DaVinci wide gamut intermediate. Okay, save and you'll see this automatically looks a lot better. Okay, because it's supposed to look like this, right? So this is how you can use the other my managed wide gamut LUTs here. So I've labeled all of them there so you can easily use that. So, but how can you import these? So if you go to, to the Google Drive link that I put in the description below, you should see that there's a zip file right here that you can download. Okay, so from here, you should get this file right here. Okay, so the DaVinci Power Grades uh, .zip file, which when you unzip it, will give you all this here. So what you can do here is you can just go right click, import. Okay, so just go to 
the unzipped folder that you've unzipped and then just import all the DPX files, okay? So it does import it twice if you import the DRX and DPX files, but let me just import a few uh, DPX files just so you can see. Um, let me just import three, okay? And now you can just imp import and you'll see that you have these three that you can add into your file, right? So once you delete this, uh, and then you can just use this, right? So you can double click on it and then you help suddenly have the look, okay? So the same uh, power grade that I was using. Please note that these power grades require that you use the filmic like LUT here. So for example, if this isn't working, make sure that you have right click LUT and make sure that this is the filmic blender uh, or, or the filmic um, scene linear to base encoding, right? Remember the scene linear to base encoding and this second node here relies on the LUT, which is LUT filmic base contrast. Okay, so that's why, how all of these work because they need that LUT to work. But as another step, how can you export these LUTs? For example, uh, if I wanted to export these LUTs so I could use it on another computer or someone else could use it. So in order to export your power grades, here's how you can do this. First of all, you want to label your power grade. So let's just create, let's say that this is the power grade that I wanted to um, first of all create. So first of all, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the gallery. I'm gonna go to power grades. I'm gonna right click and grab still. Okay, so I have this still now. So now I'm just gonna give it a name. So I'm just gonna right click on this. I'm gonna go um, change label. And how I label this is, I know this is a YRGB color space, right? So I'm just gonna label this with YRGB dash. And I'm gonna call this something about how it looks. So I'm just gonna call it purple uh, contrast, just something like that. Just Another tip is when you right click here, make sure that you uh, enable the use labels on still export, okay? So make sure that this is labeled. Otherwise your uh, power grades will not have labels and it'll be really hard for anyone to actually use them. So make sure that you click on this and when you right click, you should see that there's a checkbox right next to it. And what I can do from here is I can right click on this and I can go export. Oh, sorry, but this will be my power grade and I can just go export. Okay, so now if I just go back to my folder here and then you can see, well, this was the first one here. So if I just delete this one here, you can see that you have these two files, the DPX file and the DRX file. I actually don't know if you need the DRX file, but just leave it there anyway. Um, so in order to, ex to import these again, um, you can just go right click and import and you can just um, import just the same file that you had, this DPX file or this DRX file, either, either of them will work. So you can just import it and you can see I've imported this one back in. So if I just delete these, I can just double click on this and you can see this whole look comes straight back. I'm not gonna go over, because <laughs> I'm not gonna go over the other ones that you can also use, um, but basically these other ones, I'll just explain them. Okay, so these other looks here that I've also created are for, they're actually, the reason why they're so high contrast is because they're for a different color space entirely. So they were actually made for, if I just go to project settings and I go back to DaVinci YRGB. Um, and if you save this and you can see that that's how they're supposed to look. And you can see there's lots of different looks that I've created. So pretty much I'll put these in the description below, but I'll show you exactly how this works. So we're using like the same base encoding, but all we did is we added denoising here. So I just added um, this here. I added temporal threshold and um, chroma. And then I just added the uh, spatial and chroma noise here as five, just to kind of denoise that. The contrast node here was basically just adding in, um, I think it was a little bit of contrast through the, through this. So yeah, so, and then we just added the color here. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. So from here, you can just grab your still. So if I had like, for example, if I wanted this still, I can just grab still. Um, so I just go to stills, I go grab still and I have this and I can right click and I can export. And you can see that you can export your stills like this. So let me just export it into here and we'll just change it to PNG. And this is my, so new uh, image, tutorial image. Um, okay, so yeah, let me just double check this. Yeah, 
So that's basically how you can color grade your images and you can make them look really unique. And that is pretty much it. So that's how you can create a fantastic looking render uh, through DaVinci Resolve and Blender together. Thank you so much for being here. You are my lifeblood. Anime Nyan out.